Hi everyone, my name is Robin. Um, I work for Seaborn as the Vice President of Expedition Operations. And uh, today I'd, I'd really like to, in conjunction with our partner, Panache Cruises, really talk to you about an incredibly special destination, and that is the Arctic. Um, the Arctic is an incredible area. Um, it's an area that tends to be visited during the months of around about May through to about mid-September. And the Arctic is quite a large region. It obviously encompasses everything from the Northeast Passage, Northwest Passage. But typically speaking, on most expedition itineraries, the Arctic tends to be that area north of Norway, where we head up into an area known as the Svalbard Archipelago. Um, we spend generally May, June, July exploring the west and northwestern side of the Svalbard Archipelago. Um, those are typically 10-day sailings or 11-day sailings, whether we're going north or southbound, going from Tromsø to Longyearbyen or from Longyearbyen to Tromsø. Spitsbergen itself, or Svalbard as it's called, is really an incredible destination. It's comprised of these jagged high peaks, hence the name Spitsbergen. Um, it has these beautiful deep fjords, glaciers. You've got flowering plants up at 80 degrees north. You've got these magnificent bird cliffs. And of course, you know, what, what, what really makes it quite special too is the wildlife that call the area home during the summer months. So when we're uh, up in the Arctic, you know, we're, we're looking obviously for polar bears. That's the big one that everybody wants to see. But beyond that, we have the walrus, we have the Arctic foxes, we have um, a lot of the, the seals that are hauled out on the ice. It's, it's really, and of course, the bird cliffs. There's a magnificent amount of bird cliffs up in the Arctic. Uh, for our bird lovers, really a fantastic destination. Um, generally speaking, what tends to happen is we're in Svalbard, May, June, July, and from there, we slowly migrate in a westerly direction over towards areas like Iceland, up into the east coast of Greenland, exploring areas like Scoresby Sound, which is the world's largest fjord system. Truly something quite special to see. I know a lot of people rave about the Norwegian fjords, they rave about the Chilean fjords, but those are people who haven't been to Scoresby Sound and seen the world's largest fjord system firsthand. It is magnificent and something quite special to see. With Seabourn, we even head further north, up into the northeast Greenland National Park, the largest national park in the world. And we're exploring deep fjords, steep mountains, glaciers. We've got the Greenland ice cap pouring into those fjords with ice. We've got, again, polar bears, wildlife, muskox. It's really a fantastic destination to explore, both by Zodiac on land, by kayak, using seaborne submarines. Very, very special. Later in the season, we kind of head south through Prince Christian Sund, um, visiting little remote places like Agpilagtok in Prince Christian Sund. From there, of course, we head up the west coast of Greenland, exploring a lot of the more traditional small villages on the west coast of Greenland. And from there, up into areas like Disco Bay, which is famous because of the Jacobs Harbour Glacier in Lulisat, which pours an incredible amount of ice and litters Disco Bay with magnificent icebergs. Jacobs Harbour Glacier, the fastest moving glacier in the Northern Hemisphere, really is something quite special to see. From there, we typically head across the Davis Strait. We make our way over to Baffin Island, Lancaster Strait, places like Beachy Island, taking the Franklin Expedition, and then, of course, head south along Baffin Island and eventually down towards St. John's, where we have the end of our Arctic season. Of course, on our typical 10 and 11 day north southbound sailings uh, on board Seaborn Venture, heading up towards Svalbard. Um, one of the stops still on the Norwegian coastline, of course, is a stop at uh, the Storstappen Islands, which is home to a mag magnificent amount of puffins that we do in the morning. We do a Zodiac cruise, we do some kayaking. In the afternoon, we head over to North Cape. This picture here obviously illustrates North Cape. At some point, of course, you know, it was considered the end of the world. Now we know that it's not. And then, of course, beyond that is places like Bear Island, Svalbard, and then of course beyond that about 600 miles and you're actually at the North Pole. So one of the trips we do is out to North Cape. When we leave the Norwegian coastline behind us, midway between Norway and Svalbard, we have an area known as Bjornoya or Bear Island. And in the southern part, there are these magnificent sandstone cliffs that through erosion have created these natural ledges and these 
ledges have created an incredible breeding ground for things like your orcs, your guillemots, your puffins, a lot of kittiwakes. And so Bear Island in the southern section where we do about a 90 minute zodiac cruise, it's home to over a million breeding seabirds during the summer months. This really is considered by many expedition staff and industry as one of the best zodiac cruises you can do. Beyond the wildlife, you've got these magnificent caves and tunnels that go through this, these remote areas. There's waterfalls. It, it's really something quite, uh, quite special. Of course, once we get up into Svalbard, we're in the zodiacs in the morning and in the afternoon again. We're exploring. We're looking for walrus. We're looking for seals out on the ice. We're looking, of course, for polar bears. Polar bear, of course, is the big draw card up in Svalbard. And um, one of the things that, that that's quite special up in Svalbard is on the expedition ships, and because they have these PC6 ice strengthened hulls, Seaborn Venture is capable of leaving Svalbard behind for the day. And we head into the pack ice and we actually spend a full day in the pack ice, just exploring and looking for wildlife. And eight, nine times out of 10, we're seeing walrus, we're seeing polar bears, we're watching polar bears from a safe distance, hunting, exploring. And um, it's a magnificent day, obviously, just to spend time in the ice. It's something very, very different and something that the guests will never, ever forget. We spoke about other areas in the Arctic. As we mentioned, we head up the west coast of Greenland into, you know, Davis Strait, across Lancaster Sound, uh, Beachy Island, and eventually down to St. John's. Again, on the expedition ship, the operations, we have two operations per day. We're doing either a Zodiac cruise or a Zodiac landing in the morning. We're coming ashore. We may be exploring a small village. We might be going for a guarded hike. We might be looking for wildlife. Simultaneously, we have multiple kayak departures. We have multiple submarine departures. Back on board for lunch, reposition. And pretty much the morning is repeated again in the afternoon with either a Zodiac cruise in front of a glacier, coming ashore, looking for wildlife, places like Lady Franklin Island, Monumental Island, fantastic for Zodiac cruises. These are areas late in the season where the ice has receded and the polar bears are then remaining on the islands until the ice comes back in and they can take to the ice and hunt again. So fantastic opportunities to really see polar bears, walrus in these remote islands uh, in Canada. And then of course, we slowly head south and we finish up our Arctic season in, in St. John's. Of course, incredible destinations, multiple sailings as we move across the, across the Arctic. And of course, again, highly recommend you know, to work with our travel partner, Panache Cruises, to be able to look at booking some of these expeditions with us.